Um, so welcome everyone again. Um, I'd like to present by uh, giving you a short overview of the program. Um, we are going to talk today about managing risk in IT projects or basically in software projects. Um, what I would like to do is to share with you what are the common business problems that um, that our clients have and that some of you might have. Um, we would then go into uh, what capabilities there are that could address those um, issues and then we finalize with monitoring the actual risk that you have in, in software projects. So our approach um, goes from a nondescript risk in, in software pro projects uh, to a managed risk in the sense that at the end of the, of the approach you would be able to at any point in a software project know how much risk you actually run, um, which would help in, in managing that risk. Okay, so Mike, if you can switch to the next slide, please. Um, so what are common problems in software projects? Um, what we find is that there are a number. Uh, they basically boil down to three main problems. One is the uh, business issues. Um, just to put it bluntly, software projects are always too expensive, too slow, and they can't be sustained. And what we mean by that is that um, budget is on the whole underestimated. Uh, the business in general would like more agility in a project, uh, being able to deliver more changes. Um, be they formal changes or even informal changes or quicker bug fixes. Um, and they would like the overall IT budget to not rise. So with sustainability, we mean that um, on average when you're managing a portfolio of, of software applications or software systems, your IT budget for maintaining those systems tends to be more expensive every year. Um, and specifically when that increase is higher than your revenue increase, then at one point there will be uh, an unsustainable situation. So that's in regard to the, to the business issues. Um, the second type of problems are basically a project failure or project failure rates. Uh, what we find is that on average one-third of software projects fail for some definition of failure. This is not this is not our particular finding. But this is a, a an industry average. But what you see is that uh, there is a fairly large margin when it comes to project size or or um, lead time in the project regarding the failure rate. So uh, larger projects have a much higher chance of failure than smaller projects. Um, and again, if you want to push out your functionality very quickly, you run a, a much higher chance of, of failing. Um, and of course, that is similar for, for cost overrun. So a cost overrun could, could be described as a failure. So your, your project could be functionally successful, but the cost overrun could be so high that, that it's uh, deemed a failure anyway. Um, and the third common problem we see is to do with uh, IT project management. There is, um, There are still a lot of projects that are done through a waterfall or waterfall-like approach, um, which, we, which has problems that we probably all uh, have seen. Um, and it turns out to be that a waterfall project in general delivers um, a project that is not close to what the original end users would uh, like to see. It is um, it is seen as lots of overhead, uh, fairly expensive and fairly slow. But it has one benefit to it that it's it it seems to be very predictable. Um, you can make a very interesting budget and a, and a and a nice looking plan. And from a management perspective, this looks fairly predictable. Um, on the other end, there's the agile approach, where you see that um, 
it would deliver in general it delivers a better product and it usually delivers that uh, with less overhead and less cost but it is very hard to manage from a from a general management perspective uh, there are no release schedules there's not a nice clean picture of when are we done and um, what is our budget or what, what is our budget need to be so these are all issues that we face on a daily basis with our clients and um, these are all contributors to uh, various aspects of risk and I would like to to contrast and compare a couple of those issues and then come up with a um, with a method for for capturing these risks and and uh, trying to manage them in your project uh, so Mike if you could go to slide nine uh, there's one one more thing I'd like to share with you um, the cost of risk for a product is fairly high in the sense that uh, even though software projects in general are very expensive uh, the software project is only in general 20 percent of the total cost of um, owning a system there are various um, there's there are various papers describing this this cost differentiator but in general the, it turns out that it's about 20% of your of your cost is in the project, and about 80% of your of your total cost of ownership is after the project has finished. Um, and it turns out that if you build a product of higher quality, you can actually lower that 80% uh, tremendously. If you look at the slides, you can see that there are the the, the project is built up out of three asp three different uh, arrows. Um, where build and acceptance uh, acceptance actually includes testing so uh, so that's why build and acceptance are f more or less equal uh, but maintenance is by far the largest largest aspect of your uh, of your software project and what is interesting is that maintenance in general is not a line item in anyone's budget um, but it is a very high cost and it's a risk driver so, um, if we look at, uh, Mike, if you want to go to slide 10. If we look at the uh, size of software and the risk of failure, there, there is some very interesting work done by uh, Capers Jones, where he uh, takes a large database of projects and uh, determines the failure rate in terms of delayed projects or canceled projects and the delayed projects are the dark gray ones and the canceled projects are the light gray ones um, and he takes the notion of function points to determine or to look at the failure rate of these uh, various systems so it turns out that the larger your system is planned to be the higher the failure rate um, but there is some predictability in there so it turns out that if you have a 3000 function point system which is uh, slightly above average I would say it's about uh, for those of you who aren't well first in function points this is about what a team of 15 people 15 software developers would build in a year um, so it is a fairly average size system I would say and if you take such a project it turns out that there's a uh, chance of 30 percent that this project will be canceled and there's a chance of an additional 20 percent chance that it will be delayed um, so only half of those projects will actually deliver on time which doesn't sound too bad from an IT perspective but from a project management perspective it sounds 